Paris, the art capital of the world. Henri Matisse, Louis Bourgeois, Pablo Picasso, this is where some of the world's most important artists made history. Today, Paris still appeals to those hungry for artistic experiences. That's how it attracted me. My name is Marzana Jarczak and I want to explore parts of the art world that usually remain unseen. In this series, I'm going to see how art is made, sold and collected, and I'm taking you with me. It all starts in the artist's studio. From initial ideas and sketches to finished works, this is where the art is made. I'm on my way to Lille to visit the studio of Visham Rada, an artist whose immersive pieces merge art with science. Isham's works have been exhibited in Centre Pompidou, Palais de Tokyo and Menor Gallery, and I'm here to learn more about his creative process. Since uh, I was a child, I'm, I was fascinated by the shapes that na nature can, can create, and I was, I, I, I was born and I raised in Casablanca, in, in Morocco, and it's a city that uh, there is no so much nature in it, it's almost like uh, it's a big city that is, is evolving very fast and almost like a living organism. It's also a link to chaos that it's, uh, in my work is very, it's a, it's a theme that is very important for me. In a certain way, I think that recreating a kind of nature indoor, it's something that came from where I, I, I lived. I only made um, uh, a scientist um, baccalaureate. Uh, but then I, I went to fine art school. Science is more for me a kind of tool, um, something that is at the more simple thing is to take something from nature, take it in the studio, and then ob observe it, change a parameter like temperature, humidity, heat. It's um, a way for me of having a kind of relationship with matter. It's also um, kind of ambivalence, it's always coming from an intuition. Often by chance, things happen and uh, that I find interesting. And from this point, I will try to um, put, in, put in place a kind of protocol to isolate the, the, the thing that happened and uh, reproduce it. Why do you leave so much space for chance? Uh, for me, it's very important because at the end, science, as a, the way I, I use it, is only um, how is, a certain way how to cook in the studio. At the end, for me, what is important, what I can give to people uh, who are experiencing uh, um, what I do, is more like a space of freedom of mind in a certain way. Like, um, it's not at all important for me to understand at the end what happened. It's important for me, uh, almost like a painter, to, to, to in, for a very simple thing like composition, to control how the shapes emerge, how they evolve. But at the end, for me, and the, the scientific understanding is not at all what I want to give. It's more like a space where people will be able to think, to recognize shapes, to think about memories of landscapes, of, and at the end, just creating spaces that are more suitable than a blank page to so that people can project um, memories, things, landscape they have they already seen, some moments or some some tooks, some projection in a certain way. There is nothing I want to tell in a certain way. I don't, I don't feel as an artist the one who should tell to people how to behave or how to think. For me, yes, the experience to artworks is something that is very personal and um, it's, it's also changing with time. I was wondering if you could just give from the perspective of an artist, what is the advice that you can give to people to encourage them to just open up to art? Just uh, to go to the museum or go to the cinema never read anything before, just um, experience. And then if you are interested, you can read what people talk about your friends, read. And um, if you didn't feel anything, go to another museum and <laughs> experience again. Art has the power to stimulate the viewers to make them understand the world and themselves better. 
and how do artists stimulate themselves to create? Join me in the studio of Mathilde Denise, whose practice is oriented towards paintings, installations, sculptures, performance and video for some answers. How do you boost your creativity and curiosity? I think um, my way to be curious and uh, to imagine some stuff at the studio is, um, is just life and my life. And uh, first, my friends, and they are artists for the most of them, are uh, just my inspiration and my dialogue with uh, the world. I did a lot of videos and uh, photos with my phone uh, of a lot of scene and a lot of situation and a lot of uh, little thing, little fragment of life. And this is with me also. I can see a bird and and this is an idea for the new paintings, you know. I began a few years ago to collect and, uh, and reuse some fragments of objects. They're uh, uh, completely useless. And uh, it was at first for create a little uh, museum at home to feel great, you know, to, to have some poetics view uh, around my, my room and uh, etc. And today I mixed uh, this practice and the paintings because I yeah. painting is the starting point and then I put a uh, painting on in different way for exactly for a costume for a performance or costume in a movie and uh, all this thing talking about my difficulties to figure out to to figure and to find a way to talk about the presence and the absence of the figure every time and when you work on a specific exhibition do you choose the types of works that you're putting before so do you plan that you want to have some paintings and then some sculptures or is it a natural process and everything you know it's comes an intuitive out pro process intuitive course, process yes and i do the both together so everything is linked and if i find something uh, if I find a motif that I like, I will put it in the, in the another painting. And if something is revealed in this other one that I do, I, I will put it in. So it's a dialogue, permanent dialogue between the both. The, the colors and the forms, they give me the direction. And they can be either forms that you see somewhere on the street or you see in, exactly. a, in a cinema. Exactly. It's really open. But I work a lot with music. In what way? Uh, to be focused on it. Oh, so you listen to music yeah, while I listen working? Yeah, music. Yeah. Okay, what are you currently listening to? A lot of Brian Eno. Okay. <laughs> it's like a meditative way to, okay. to be with the paintings. And then you, when you look at the paintings, do you see reflection of the music or...? I don't know, but uh, I think it's, uh, uh, it's, it's in your body, you know? So it's more getting you into a specific state that you can work yeah, freely exactly. rather than look for yeah. direct inspiration from the music to the painting. The music gives us, give you an energy, you know, slow one or electric one, or and I think it's energy in the body. It's a vibe. So yeah, I think display. And when you work, you don't only get boost of inspiration from the world that surrounds you, but you are also very introspective. You use your own works to rework them, so you cut your paintings and you make different works of art from them. Why? Art has to be a game for me, really. In, in what sense? In a sense that uh, I think nothing is really finished and don't have to be finished. I think it's really important that art, paintings, culture are not secret and you can destroy it when you want. It's you know, it's, uh, this is freedom for me. Once the artwork is finished, it's ready to be shown to the world. From exhibitions to auctions, it circulates and stimulates audiences across the globe. How do galleries select their artists? Who can buy art and what's the best way to get started? Make sure to see our next episode and don't forget to subscribe to Vogue Polska YouTube channel. Au revoir. <laughs>